can we start with just an injury update and who will be available and won't be available tomorrow night? Suggestions that Callum McGregor might be out for this one. Yeah, Cal, Cal um, has got a bit of a knock, so... Um, Sorry, right. yeah, yeah, Cal's got a bit of a, a knock, so uh, he'll miss uh, he'll miss tomorrow. Um, um, so yeah, so he'll be uh, he'll be one that's out. Uh, uh, Anthony Ralston's back, so he's available, so we'll get him uh, back involved. And uh, Lee Alabado will miss tomorrow night uh, as well because of uh, Yom Kippur. So um, obviously, a fairly significant religious. Day for him, so um, so he'll miss out tomorrow night, and then uh, that's it from the weekend. I think uh, ins and outs. In terms of Callum being missing, how big a blow is that for you to lose your captain for this game? Yeah, I mean it's it's not great. I mean you, you obviously, um, you know, he's a very influential player uh, for us, but yeah, we go through a period like that at the moment where we're, we're getting some significant outs but again I mean it's it's kind of been the, the state of play since I've got here we've, we've sort of been in a constant state of flux not being able to settle but um, again that's you know I see that as an opportunity for us to just build resilience through this period and, and just keep going what, with what we've been doing and playing our football and if we can get through these periods without sort of shifting from you know the kind of team we want to be then it's going to make us even stronger once we get everyone back. And just on um, Giacomacchus, is he set to be back? Is he? Yeah, no, he's, nah, probably no, no, not for tomorrow, mate. Again, he's like I said the other day, he's he's just quite not ready there, and you know he's in the boat with probably three or four others who, you know, we kind of expect to return around the same time, probably the weekend or midweek next week. So, um, but yeah, for this game, it's come too early. Despite the injuries, I mean, still an exciting prospect. You know, going back to Seville for Celtic, the history that brings and. Obviously, the chance to to set a marker in this group as well. I mean, it must, it's an exciting period. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, we're we're looking forward to it. It's uh, as you said, there's uh, there's a historical significance with us uh, going back to Seville, and um, yeah, it's an opportunity for us to test ourselves against a, you know a very good side um, um, away from home, and um, you know it's it's what we were, I guess we were so pleased to get into sort of this group stage because we knew that uh, we'd get some pretty exciting fixtures to be involved in and um, you know we're looking forward to it. Now you've earned the right to be here you've come through all the stresses of qualification how important is it that you and the players enjoy the experience of the group stages and see where it takes you? Yeah look um, uh, you definitely do want to enjoy it but I, I think uh, you know to enjoy it you've, you've just got to go in there with the view of you know trying to have an impact and, and and by that I mean you know can we play our football against some quality opposition home and away and test our resolve to to be the kind of football team that we're starting to show we want to be you know, we're not there yet so um that's that's the exciting thing and and you know you get involved in some you know like I said some some special nights hopefully so um you want to enjoy that but I want to enjoy it to come from you know us um believing in, in in something and 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 that's something for us is about the kind of football team we want to be that's you know I don't want to just go there with fearful or, or or sort of hesitant about um you know outcomes and all those kind of things to truly enjoy the experience and take in the experience I've always felt that you know what you go and give all of yourself and, and believe in something and and usually you come away having lived that experience to its fullest how do you get it so the players don't get bogged down in outcomes though because Footballers are often have that drilled into them. Well, it's, I mean, that's I mean, that's that's a constant sort of um, you know the kind of gospel I try and tell talk to them about every day is that you know the the, the outcomes. Uh, there's no football team in the world, or no player or coach who um, doesn't want to win. So, you know that that's not what makes it unique. So, from my perspective, it's about. Who we who we want to be and how we want to portray ourselves as individuals and more importantly as a team. What kind of football team do we want to be? And you know, as for some people, that's probably too grandiose, and I get that. That's all right. That's that's. But that's my sort of way of coaching and and what I want to create. And and we we, we talk about that to the players on a daily basis, so that when it comes to a game like this, I'm not all of a sudden having a major shift in in what I'm telling them. It's it's a continuation of what we've been, what I've been sort of speaking to them about from day one. 
Yeah, we, you know, like all all opposition, you know, we 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 do our research and we've had somebody watch them play on Monday night and yeah, you know, we've got all the information we need on them. Yeah, you know, they're a pretty settled team. They 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 brought in one or two, but you know, they had a fantastic year last year. They've got an outstanding manager and Again, it's a kind of opposition we want to test ourselves against, and uh, especially away from home. Um, the quality side, they've got some real threats um, up front um, who, who, you know, uh, can cause any team problems. So um, <clears throat> I think it'll be a good game. I think it'll be a good test for us, and I think it'll be a good game. And you know, from our perspective, again, it's about trying to impose the way we want to play on, on, on a very good opposition. Yeah, look, as I said before, I mean, there is historical significance. And, and, and you know, I mean, I'm, I'm at Celtic Park now. When you walk around, there are images, you know, whether that's of Martin O'Neill or or our fans on that day, um, you know, the, the the past experiences in Seville and in European competitions, um, they're everywhere. And, um, of course, that they have an impact. And, um, you know, it would have been great if we had some travelling support um, across there because it's a journey you want to share with, with your supporters. But irrespective um you know you you understand the historical significance but it also kind of motivates you to to kind of make your own stamp um and that's what i keep saying for this team is that you know they've got an opportunity to create their own moments in 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 this you know great football club's history and 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 create nights that hopefully um can be talked about by future generations of players who come through these uh through these doors um, I just want to go back a minute ago. You were saying it's you know just a continuation of the same message since you've come in. But I wonder if you approach these away games differently now. You're in the group stage. Obviously, you had all the playoff rounds. You're going to win. You need to to get through. But now it can be more about points than a away point can be valuable. Do you approach the game differently, or is it still the same message: attack and win? Well, my philosophy is: if you win games, you've got a good chance of progressing. So you know that that's irrespective of home and away. And I think even more so in group stages. I think. If you start thinking about scratching around for a point here or there or, or trying to accumulate a certain amount of points to get through, I think, again, you know, it's not the kind of football team we want to play. We want to be, um, we'll go there and we'll try and win a game of football and, and that doesn't change and our approach won't change. Uh, it's not that we um, don't recognise that, you know, the opposition or the difficulty of the opposition or playing away from home. I understand all that, but, you know, I think, playing for those kind of outcomes is just fraught with danger. You're kind of starting already with conceding something and I'm not prepared to concede anything to anyone in any way, shape or form, you know, with the football teams I'm in charge of, you know, we'll go there. What I do know is the game starts 0-0 and you, then you've got 95 minutes to, to try and win a game of football. I just wanted to ask you about a few of the new boys that have come in, Jota, Carter, Vickers, impressed at the weekend. How have they settled in and are they looking forward to, to their first European action tomorrow? <laughs> Yeah, I, th- I think they've they've settled in well. Um, again, you know, we the settling process you know, this year has been you, you just get thrown in and and sort of uh, it's a sink or swim scenario. And and luckily for us, most of the boys have have, have tended to swim rather than sink. And um, which uh, you know I think is a testament to their character as much as anything else. Um, you know, I think they had both had you know good first games, and and we know there's more to come from them, and they know there's more to come, but. I mean, Jotas has, has had experience playing in Spain, which I think will will help him. And and um, you know, with 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 Cameron, he's you know he's experienced as well in in, in playing first team football for a while now. And uh, I'm sure they're both looking forward to to it as I guess for most of the team. Because yeah, to be fair, even the ones who have been here a little while are still you know very much at the beginning of their journeys as as Celtic footballers. So I think for all of them, it'll be an exciting sort of prospect. And can I just double check with you on the availability of Greg Taylor and James Forrest, please? Yeah, Greg um, looks like we'll, we'll probably need surgery on his shoulder, so we, we, we'd expect him to be out for you know medium term sort of time frame. Um, so he'll be out for a while. Uh, James uh, is not far away. He's, he's got sort of one final hurdle to get over in terms of being available for selection. Um, he's working awfully hard in rehab and, and training, but hasn't joined the group yet. So, but we're hoping he'll join the group um, probably over the next sort of seven to 10 days. And at the weekend, you turned to Albion a Yeti and, and of course he didn't let you down, but he had struggled to get a run of games. How big an opportunity is this for, for a Yeti now to step up? 
Yeah, it's it's an opportunity for for Albie, and and you know, again, he's testament to if you work hard at training, and you just got to be patient, and wait for your opportunity. But the important thing is, when the opportunity comes, is that you you take it, and um, you know, he did that, and you know, he's he improved as the game went on, and it was hard for him because obviously, when you haven't played for quite a while on a consistent basis, it's hard to get a rhythm. But uh, you know, I, I said after the game, he, he really persevered in that area and got his rewards at the end and like all goal scorers I guess scoring goals um, he'll be feeling good and looking forward to tomorrow